Before we begin writing code to access a database, let's say a little bit about ADO.NET. ADO.NET is a set of objects that allow you to write code to work with the data outside of your application. At first sight, ADO.NET seems complicated with its various objects such as the connection, data adapter, data set and data table. But it is here in which the flexibility of ADO.NET lies. The same program code can be written to manipulate data from a wide range of different external data sources, such as SQL Server, Microsoft Access and Oracle, to name but a few. Although ADO.NET allows an application to establish a live link with an external data source, one of the design goals of ADO.NET was to allow an application to establish a connection, retrieve some data, then close that connection and work with the data while disconnected. So here's a typical scenario. We have our application and an external data source. And we begin by establishing a connection between the two. We can then send an SQL command to the database and data will be returned to our application in the form of a data set. That data set can contain one or more data tables. Once we have that data, we can drop the connection. The data set is actually a memory resident copy of some of the data from the database. The ADO.NET architecture is represented in more detail here. This diagram illustrates the various objects and how they relate to each other. The connection object allows you as a programmer to establish a communication channel with the external database. The data reader object is used in conjunction with a command object to retrieve data from a database sequentially as your SQL query executes. The data adapter acts as a bridge between the data reader and the data set. The data adapter is used to fill a data set with query results. As said before, the data set is a memory resident copy of a subset of the data from the database. A data set can contain one or more data tables and even the relationships between these tables. Each data table contains data rows and data columns. It can also contain constraints, otherwise known as validation rules. Behind the scenes, the data set is held in XML format, that's the extensible markup language, which makes it particularly useful for web developers who wish to use it on web pages. You will find that once you've written some code to successfully retrieve data from a database or to save new data into your database, you'll not need to write this code again from scratch. You'll find yourself copying and pasting it into a new application and modifying it accordingly. And you'll get pretty handy with this kind of code if you write a lot of data handling applications like this.